Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at how to do, well, a couple of things. The gist of it is that we're going to use something called dynamic tagging inside of Fluent Forms to send data to Fluent CRM so that we can, this is where the dynamic comes in, dynamically tag people who answer our form in a certain way with tags inside of Fluent CRM. Now, one addition to this is that we're going to get them to fill out the form by sending them a link from Fluent CRM, and that link is automatically going to populate as much as we can on the form based on what we know about them. So things like their name and their email address are already going to be pre-populated, and then when they submit that form back to us, we already have the data so that we know what email gets tagged with what options a person chose in the poll. This is great for things like pulling your email list. One example, this is actually a use case from Convology Pro. Uh, a member actually requested this tutorial and he's going to pull his members to find out which blog posts on his website were their favorite for the year. And what's interesting about that is that you can then retarget and remarket or re-email to these people based on what they thought was their favorite. And that lets you then get them more relevant information in your emails and have more success with your email marketing. So if that's something that interests you and you wanna learn the mechanics of how to make that happen, stay tuned. So like I mentioned, there are gonna be two parts to this. The first one is going to be creating our form and then we're going to go into Fluent CRM where we'll set up the email and I'll show you how to send them an email that has a link directly to the form where it pre-populates with their user information. So let's just go ahead and create a new form. We're under Fluent Forms. I'm using Fluent Forms Pro for this. I don't know if you need the Pro version or not, um, but I'm a Pro user and I highly recommend it. I'll put links in the descriptions for all these products that I'm using. So we'll go to All Forms, we'll go to Add a New Form, and you can pretty much choose any form that you want here. I think if I do a little search, there's even something that they've pre-built called a polling form. It's just a couple of fields with some checkboxes and some radio buttons. I'm just gonna create my own new one, just a blank form, start from scratch just so you can see that you can really do this with anything. We can ask the user for name fields, but I'm just going to add a simple text field, keep it really easy, an email field, and then I'm going to add some polling questions. We're going to do check boxes for this one because I'm going to let the users choose what they are, maybe like choose their top three uh, favorite blog posts. So maybe I'll do something like this where I rename the checkbox field to favorite blog posts of 2021. And then I'll come in here and I'll populate these. Okay, so I've created a couple options for them and I'll let them choose their favorite blog posts and they can check all of the ones that apply. Now let's go to our text input field and I'll just change this to first name uh, so that we have our first name, email, and then our favorite blog posts of 2021 that the user can select. And now we need to set these fields up so that when somebody visits this form from our email, these fields pre-populate so that they don't have to enter their information twice. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the first name, we'll click on that field, and then we will go to advanced options and we will find default value. And here we need to click these three dots off to the right and populate with a get parameter. This is because we're going to populate these fields based off of query strings in the URL. That's a fancy way for saying, have you ever seen those URLs with the question mark at the end and then it has like first underscore name equals that kind of stuff. Those are uh, get parameters or we're gonna use get parameters to get those query string variables into our form. So you'll see that we have a left bracket, the word get, a period, and then input underscore text, and then a right bracket thing. So we're gonna highlight where it says input underscore text, and we're going to use the variables from Fluent CRM. So for this one, it'll be first underscore name. So the default value will be the left squiggly bracket, get dot first underscore name, right squiggly bracket. And that now will pre-populate this field with the user's first name from the link that they click in Fluent CRM, and we'll show you how to set that up. We need to do the same thing for email. Click on email, go to advanced options, default value, left squiggly bracket, get, or I could just click the three dots thing and say populate by get param, and we'll say get dot email. Nice thing is, since Fluent CRM, or since Fluent Forms and Fluent CRM are made by the same people, they knew that get dot email was most likely what we would need to put in the email field. And we're not going to do anything for these fields. We're just going to let the user check the boxes of all the ones that they loved. And then we're going to tag them based on their selection. Okay, so I could add more polling questions if I wanted to, but for this video, we're going to keep it relatively simple. And we're going to say that this is our form. We're going to send users here. They're going to select their favorite blog posts from the year. And then we're going to tag them based on their selections so that we can market to them again in the future by email.
So first let's go ahead and just save our form in the upper right hand corner. And then where it says settings and integrations, we're going to want to click that option. And then on the left hand side, um, we're looking for marketing and CRM integrations. We're gonna click on that. And then the upper right hand corner, hover over add new integration. And because we have Fluent CRM installed, we're going to use the Fluent CRM integration. And you can give it a name, whatever you want. We're going to choose for our list. We're gonna add them to Doug's main email list. You can add them to whatever lists you have in your Fluent CRM that makes sense to you. Now for the primary fields, we are going to select email for email. Now for first name, we could leave this blank because we likely already have that information, but we do want email because that's what it's going to pair it by. If you did choose to uh, populate their first name field, maybe you didn't have it, you could click this drop down arrow on the right hand side, and then you could choose uh, first name because that was the name of our field. And then when you click that, notice it's going to put again those parameters in here. And we never gave our field that we created in this demo video a special name. So it's just calling itself input underscore text. That's just what it's called by default. Um, but we're not gonna worry about that. We'll leave that one blank. Now, the main thing we're looking for for this is something called dynamic tag selection. There's a little checkbox here we're going to click and then we're going to select our tag. When I click on set tag, you'll notice that I've already created some tags that matched the tags that I'm going to use in my poll. For you, you just wanna make sure that you have a tag ready to go by this step in Fluent CRM for whatever you're going to tag the person. Whatever you're looking to tag somebody based on, find it here. So I want to tag somebody Thrive Apprentice if the favorite blog posts of 21 is equal to posts about Thrive Apprentice. And that would be my blog post title, whatever that option was. And then I'm just going to click this plus symbol here and I'm gonna add in a couple of more. So let's go ahead and finish up selecting all of these so that we can properly tag somebody. Okay, so I finished that up. I have all of them set. You can see here, if Thrivecart is their favorite blog post of 2021, there it is, it's gonna tag them. Now from here, we're going to just click or make sure that enable this feed is checked and then create the Fluent CRM feed. Great, make sure it's toggled on. It should be by default and we're ready to go with this integration. Now let's jump over to Fluent CRM and I'll show you how to send a link in an email that's going to populate some fields. Real quick before I do that, I'm going to go into here and click on landing page. We're still under settings and integrations, landing page. I'm going to enable the landing page for this form just so that I have somewhere to send them. You could embed this form on a blog post that you have. You could put this form just about anywhere that you want to because Fluent Forms is cool like that. But we're just gonna create a landing page so that we get an exact link where we can send our users to. So if you want, you can customize it. I'm just going to save my settings and that way I can have a form ready to go for our tutorial. And if you're curious how to get the link to that landing page, you can push this little button right here that has like the little networking three dots thing. I never know what to call it. So click on that, that'll get you the link that you need. Now let's jump into our Fluent CRM where we're going to set up a link so that I can show you how to pre-populate some of these fields. So you could build this into automations, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to use what we call a campaign. So I'm going to go to emails, I'm going to go to campaigns. I'm going to then create my first email campaign because we're on a demo site. And we'll just call this favorite blog of 2021 click continue. And now we're writing our email. I'm just going to keep this pretty simple for our tutorial, but this would be where you craft your email to your audience, asking them to take the poll, give you information, things like that. So let's say that this was going to be our link. I'll just say, click here to vote on your favorite posts of 2021. And we're going to highlight that text and we're going to insert a link. Now the link that we're going to use is that link to our landing page. Again, if you embedded this poll on a blog post, you can embed it there. But for us, we're just using this landing page. So I'm pasting in the link to my landing page. Now, if I hit enter and the user gets this email and they click on that link, they'll be taken there, but their name and their email won't be populated. So I'm gonna show you how to populate that now. So here's a pretty cool trick. Inside of Fluent CRM, if you just hit return and you open up an empty line, if you use the at sign, you can see that this is going to give you some of those, um, what do they call them, like merge tags, so that you can see like, okay, I want someone's first name. If I click on that, you'll see that it transforms into this double left squiggly bracket contact dot first underscore name squiggle squiggle. We're just gonna copy that, we're going to click on our link, and we're going to click edit. Now, this is an interesting case here because our landing page already has a question mark. Now we can't add another question mark. If this were your normal blog post, let's just say like, you know, uh, convology.com slash favorite blog post of 2021 slash, then I would put a question mark and then we would proceed. But because we already have one, because we're using one of these Fluent CRM or Fluent Form landing pages, 
Instead, we're just going to put the and sign, I think it's called an ampersand, and we're going to put first underscore name, because remember, that's what we put for the get parameter in fluent forms. And then we're going to put equals, and we're going to paste in that parameter we just copied and hit enter. Now let's repeat this, let's find the next one. It's pretty simple. We're gonna do their email, so contact email. You guessed it, it is just email. So contact.email, let's click on our link again and click edit. And we need to put another ampersand. You always separate new variables with an ampersand and sign. Type email, because that's what we put for our get parameter. We hit equal and then hit paste and hit enter. And now our link is going to work when they click on it and it's gonna pre-populate those fields. Let's give that a test so that we can prove it works. I'm going to send myself a test email so that I can click on that link. And I've added myself as a contact already, so it's going to have my info. So I'm gonna click save, and then I'm going to continue to the subject line where I'll fill this out and be able to send a test email. So here we go, I got my test email um, using a program called Local to generate local demo sites. So they give you this little mail interface it's called MailHog. I don't even know if that's a real thing, it probably is. Uh, but we basically have our test email here and we have our link. Click here to vote on your favorite posts of 2021. I'm going to click on that link and let's see what happens. There we go. We were taken to our little landing page that we had and it pre-populated my name, Doug, and Doug at Convology.com. Now let's go ahead and go back into Fluent CRM and I want to show you that I don't have any tags on my account. So here we are in my contact profile. You can see I'm not on any lists or any tags. I'm gonna submit that form now. I'm gonna choose my favorite posts of 2021 and we'll see what gets added here. So I'll jump back over to the landing page. And for me, let's say my favorite posts were Thrive Apprentice, uh, Fluent CRM and Thrivecart. I'm gonna submit the form. There we go, form is submitted and you could have configured this however you want to redirect people somewhere or whatever you wanted it to say. This is the default, but let's jump back into our profile and see what tags we have now. Let's go ahead and give this a refresh. And there we go. So not only was I added to Doug's main email list because I hadn't added myself prior, but I've also been tagged with Thrive Apprentice, Thrivecart, and Fluent CRM. Now what's really cool is you can create automations. Let's say that you've already pre-planned that if somebody was really into Thrive Apprentice, that you were going to send them four different emails over the next four months, all about maybe a product that you have or a membership that you have or whatever it might be, you can now create marketing automation so that people get emails about what they're interested in based off of a poll that they took or a form that they completed. Now in our use case here, this was all about pulling your users and adding tags, but I want you to broaden your perspective here and see that this can be applied to a lot of different things. Let's say that somebody fills out a contact form on your corporate website and you choose things like select the service you're interested in or how can we help you. You can then tag them inside of Fluent CRM so that you know more about them and you can better serve them with the emails that you send them. There's lots of different applications to this really neat trick. And remember, what makes it all possible is dynamic tagging, which is a feature inside of Fluent Forms for people that have Fluent CRM. That's gonna do it for me in this video. If you have any questions about Fluent Forms or Fluent CRM or would like to request any tutorials, please feel free to leave a comment on this video. I'm gonna have a lot of really great information coming out about Fluent CRM and lots of ways that you can use this great tool to help lower the cost for your business and accomplish some really cool things, kind of like this tutorial. So be sure to follow the channel if you're not, and I'll see you in the next video.